Hello and welcome to Denis Guarda Cities ABC YouTube podcast. In this series of interviews with global thought leaders, CEOs, and founders of organizations, we portrayed the present and the future of humanity and we tried to look at the biggest subjects and the biggest narratives that we are creating and trying to understand our present and especially building a better future. This series are part of the citiesabc.com project that was created precisely for creating a better way and a better narrative for the cities where we live and the people that are part of the cities. And as well, in this series, we've been portraying people and a lot of other different solutions around ideas, concepts, narratives, software, books, and a lot of other things. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the first humanoids, robots, that has been created, either the robot, or we can call it a lot of different ways, and you're going to be looking at the founder behind the project, but as well the collective um, work that has been doing, done to put all of this together, that it comprehends engineering, heart, machine learning, and mechanical robotics. Aiden, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for receiving us, first of all. Lovely to see you. Um, so Aiden, you have a, a fantastic background, both in the art world as an entrepreneur and as a researcher. I'd like to ask about you, about uh, your work as a researcher, as an entrepreneur, and as well, um, even some of the research you've been doing in provenance and different areas. So a bit of background history. Yeah, I th um, I've run a, a gallery. I've been a gallerist for over 20 years. Um, I was originally at Sotheby's Institute in London, which was a fantastic time because it gave me a bird's eye view of the entire art market. And I thank them enormously for that incredible training. And subsequently, I obviously set up a specialist art gallery in School of Paris and Modern British. So we sold works from Picasso, Matisse, Chagall, and on the Modern British side, it'd be um, Hepworth, Nicholson, you know, the St. Ives group, etc. And it was from that time in the gallery, having these remarkable artworks around me, you can't help but think very carefully about the lives that these artists led. And I did a, a piece of research about three years ago and the, the simple question was what is it about this top, these top artists, this one percent, that have made them so successful? What is it about artists that have made them stand out above all the others? So I did a, a three-month project comparing artists with each other. Um, everything from Raphael to Michelangelo to Constable and Turner to contemporary guys, you know, uh, Damien Hirst and Tracy Ellen, comparing them. And after a very frustrating time, not succeeding at all to what was the commonality between them, I came very frustrated down from looking at these things. I wrote them on the wall, all of this detail, comparing them. And as I came down, very displated, I said to my partner, I'm not finding out what joins them together. I'm not finding out what makes them successful. And she simply flippantly, rather successfully said, well, you're not asking the right questions. So the next night I went back up and compared further these artists. And I had this epiphany moment where I realised what combined the top artists of the world in actual fact, wasn't the fact that they were incredible geniuses in their garrets, working away and producing work that everybody loves. What I discovered, to my surprise, is that actually the audiences that looked at these artists were already tackling the issues that the artists were doing. So uh, what the artists, their genius, their 1%, is that they pick up on an issue that is unsettling, uncomfortable, or difficult in society. So when they put the artwork out, there's a huge response to them because it's something that they're already talking about. So I am a bit of an art historian and I've looked into huge aspects of art history. And I always had this idea that these were great genius people 
working away and what they offered the world they loved and that was it. But what I hadn't created, actually the dynamic is the audience. In actual fact, people were unsettled um, by the factories in, uh, you know, the, the rise of the mills in Constable and Turner's period. Um, people were concerned about Warhol and the rise of commodification and, and the rise of brand. Uh, in the YBAs, the rise of mass media and advertising and sensationalism that the, the Damien Hirst and the Tracy Emmons of the world. And today, of course, it's all political. People like Ai Weiwei and Marina Abramovich, they're digging into issues of our, our, our day. So what I realised that if I was going to get involved with the creativity of art, I need to work out what it is about the 2020s that is so significant to everybody. If we're going to get involved with artists, we need to have artists that are engaging with the issues of the day. And that is what was common to all the greatest artists. And so I did a huge second project looking at where we're going in the future, the future trends. What is it about the 2020s that the 2020s is gonna be remembered for? And after reading 22 books by different experts, I very much came to the decision that it was the rise of machine learning and that disruptive quality that it's going to affect every technology, every area, from our phones to the way that we go to do work, uh, to the commercial side, political, the whole thing is going to be affected by algorithms. And so with that, I decided I would do my third and final project, which was really understand that world properly. And that's where the idea for Ada came, the Ada robot. I was playing with my son and we were playing some Lego and my son built a, uh, a robot out of Lego. And it was that epiphany moment. I thought, is it possible that we could create a robot artist that it was fully AI, that created AI artworks that commented on the use and abuse of AI? And that was it. And that's where the initial spark came to create Ada the robot. So as a creator, father or visionary creator of Ada, you're touching a lot of things that, uh, first of all, no one in the art world has been that. Actually, let's say if you go to history of art, we have Leonardo that created the first inception of machines engineering, and even not robots, but at least engineering. Yeah, the night is incredible. Is exactly. Yeah. So how do you see that part? Because you are talking as, uh, in one end, an history, historian, and you have the history yes. concept. You have as well the ideas, perspective, the innovation, and now as well creator of a, a creation piece. So... I know there is a lot of things that are touching and I'm sure you're still uh, in the process. How do you see all of this together? Because this is quite cutting edge, but as well very deep in the sense that if you look at robotics, as, as I mentioned to you before, robotics has been created as automation, as a way of reproducing or replacing humans, or at least improving, helping humans, as we hope. But at the same time, until now, we're never... When I look at robots from a creative perspective, there's almost nothing. So. Ada is probably the first role. Yeah, it's great. extremely exciting. So how do you see all these areas together? And I'm particularly interested, and I'm sure our audience as well, because there's, first of all, for instance, I show Ada to a lot of people, get, they get afraid. A lot of people get afraid. That's yeah, the first of course, impression. Of course. But that's, for me, I'm excited because I work with the eye. But how do you see these parts, all these together, especially the one that come from an art conventional premium world? Yeah, when we launched her first exhibition at Oxford University, um, we were a little bit overwhelmed by the response. We had a, a day, a, a press day, which we had 15 minutes with each journalist. That ended up then being two days and then it ended up being three days. And in the end, we were in over 900 publications just for that first exhibition. So as I spent so much time with a lot of journalists, I asked them, why are you interested? Why have you come all this distance to see Ada? And it was quite consistent, their reply. Their reply was that they expected robots to do repetitive jobs, maybe uh, delivering your pizza or something like that, or may maybe logistics for delivering Amazon goods. They just didn't expect robots to be in the creative field. Um, well, of course, as we all know, machine learning, or artificial intelligence can be highly creative. The decisions that the algorithms are making, are, they are making those decisions. And 
so obviously that's very much a, an artistic process. Artists are making decisions. So when I spoke to the programmers that put together the ideas for uh, creating um, creative algorithms for Ada, for her to be able, so she is indeed able to look at you and do your portrait. And if she looked at you again, she'd do a second different portrait. She does a different work each time because the algorithm that she's running through her are making different decisions each time. So it's an incredible breakthrough and we're really thrilled and excited that Ada has had this reception. But it's because I was very clear that I wanted her to be creative. In fact, we were so concerned that we were able to make sure she was creative. We've used the definition by Professor Margaret Bowden. She's been a remarkable uh, professor on creativity. And she came up with the definition that to be creative, you have to have something that was new, surprising and of value. So when we came to Ada and we spoke to the programmers, we said, okay, the machine learning that, you, that, that you're coding has to be new. So it's unique to Ada. There's no other robots running what she's doing. Uh, it's got to be surprising. We don't quite know what she's doing each time. Um, so when she does respond to stimuli, she's doing it in her own way using the algorithm. So we are looking also what she's going to be producing because we don't quite know in, this, in, in the exact way. Um, and our value, well, in light of the media interest and, and in fact, everything we're doing now, we've got an astonishing year ahead doing uh, seven museum shows and she's traveling around the world as people are trying to question what this new world will look like where there's creativity very much part of it. But why are we doing the project? I guess the, 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 the key question is, there's been an enormous amount of engineering and expertise that has put Ada together, not only as a robot, but as an artist. Why are we doing that? Because it's cost millions of pounds to do this. Why has it been such a significant thing? Well, we're doing it because in actual fact, we're very concerned uh, the rise of machine learning, which is already taking over huge aspects. You know, if you see the film, The Social Dilemma, or you go and look at the way that WhatsApp predicts everything you're going to say, and Facebook gives you everything, and we're getting this mirrored image of back online, so your Google is different to my Google, and your Facebook is different than how it responds to us. We're a bit concerned. We're concerned because machine learning, this, this, these algorithms are very scalable. Uh, they're able to move very quickly through the internet and therefore in the wrong hands the power of these algorithms could be disastrous. We've already seen the worlds of politics and the worlds of uh, corporations using them to their own advantage. So we feel that actually to have public debate, public engagement with the way that the ethics of AI is being used is critically important to the safety of our future. I really do believe that the 2020s is going to be a very significant decade. It's going to be very many disruptions through technology into huge areas of society. We read 1984 and Brave New World with some concern. They were fictions done in the 1930s and 40s. They are now facts of the 2020s. And that was in a period of huge technological development. And as we all know, the 20th century has not been a good century for humanity. We have done some pretty silly things in the power, in the hands of the powerful. So in actual fact, with a more democratic and a more engaged world, and with the mass communication that we have, I think it's critically important that Ada, as a channel, is able to engender huge debate and discussion about the use of these future technologies. But though we've used massive amounts of technology to create Ada, we're not actually here to promote technology. In fact, we're not even here to promote robots. We're here to get public engagement with the use of technology. It's incredibly important because it is so easy to get it to be all aspects of our life. We've seen it on conservation, how algorithms are using to create yield from the ground, exhausting the soils. We already know by the uh, environmental concerns of 2019, how badly we're treating this world. 
but that goes on to our digital lives, mental health and all that. You know, there's a huge number of areas. And then, of course, the, the obvious thing is they're going to take our jobs. Well, actually, that's only part of a much bigger rise of different technologies. So we want to say, OK, if this is the way it is, where is our trust in all of this? Where is our engagement to gain trust in technology? And because it's invisible, because we can't see it, it's, though, it's very surreptitious. Um, we're very excited that Ada is going to be part of uh, another museum show, this time the Design Museum in uh, the beginning of 2021. And we're coining the title of the piece, where we, we will see what it will finally be, but we're coining the title that Ada is the face of AI. And the reason we're saying that is because AI is actually invisible. You can't see it. It's run on electric. It's not that tangible. And actually, it's stripping back the face of AI to see what it is that the decisions that these um, algorithms are making and the quality of the data. There's another area, quality of data, not very good. And these algorithms are based on the data that they use. So the biases of the data is going to come through. <clears throat> so there's quite a number of areas where we do need to have huge public debate. <clears throat> and we're really excited that Ada as an artist is becoming increasingly important because our role and our relationship with technology is becoming increasingly engaged. And it's important that we have independent... Ada is an entirely independent project not funded from any corporation or anything like that. And we're really proud of that because she can then properly say what it is that is needed to be said. The integrity of it is really high. And so we're thrilled that Ada is able to bring in these questions about the use of future technologies. And the artwork, we only issue a little bit of artwork. We're not trying to push that in any particular way. Uh, and people are getting excited when they get a piece of her artwork because it is asking these important questions and that we're hoping will be then there will be these seeds of artwork scattered all over the world asking those questions that are so incredibly important. Yeah, I, I'm, I completely respect and I, have a, I want to congratulate you for that. And, and you mentioned for me a key element. So it's an independent project created by someone that come from an arts and history background, which is quite new, because if you look at, you mentioned the social dilemma, if you look at all the issues around technology, uh, because most of the technology was, technology was created by engineers, and they don't have the philosophical, historical art approach that you have. And as well, the name Ada Lovelace comes from uh, the daughter of Lord Byron, that was actually one of the biggest poets in history. So I think that's all interesting. So. I want to touch that area because I know, well, I don't know, I know that you don't like to be called the father, but you are the father. No, by all means. Well, that's a human concept yeah. and this is a machine. Exactly. So we want to use proper language in this. Ada is a machine. She's not sentient. She's not conscious. She doesn't run after me down the road. Yeah. So, I, you know, we, we've got to have some truthful dialogue about what robots are what they're capable of doing. And people are very keen to project all sorts of things exactly. onto them. So I'm being quite you know, careful in how we describe ourselves so that we actually promote the truth. Quite an important topic now. Yes. So in actual More than fact, ever. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's why I don't like those terms. So yes, the visionary behind her, but the point is, is that she does engage with these audiences about, about where we're going as a world. But there's one touching this part and uh, the term visionary, I think I, I, I like it as well more. So, you are creating as well this project with the collaboration of some of the leading universities. So here in the UK, we have uh, Oxford, Leeds, and now Birmingham, as well the arts engineer uh, organization. So it's a, a collaborative work. You have around, uh, you mentioned around 40 people plus. Yeah, there's 30 something people who've put Ada together in respect of both the, the making of Ada, but also the, the creative side with her ability to draw and do, art, do artwork, yes. And there's a huge work of engineering, like you said, machine learning, but as well, uh, robotics, uh, mechanic engineer. Yes. So you yes. have mechanic engineer, you have processment algorithm. So this is very complex because let's say this is, I think probably there's only two or three robots in the world that have this, even Google and all the major companies are not doing this kind of things. No, sure. So how do you approach this? And you mentioned the independence and the ethics, uh, because that's, that's a huge amount of work with leading, first of all, a lot of leading universities. 
but as well there's a component of ethics that you touch. And it's not easy, but you, the fact that you come from an art background is particularly interesting. For us, if you look at 19th century, you had Ezra Pound that went to the wrong side, um, and he's still one of the biggest poets in history, but you are doing this with a conscious of art, engineering, uh, collective work, and as well a very completely sense of creating an artist that is an artist on his own. So how do you see all these different areas? Well, they all feel, for me, it's not so much about um, the, the particular divisions because I don't think the public see that. It's about the messaging. I think it's about the believability and the engagement. And so we've spent a lot of time making sure that Ada is able to um, to reach people where they're at. We're not trying to... We, it is a highbrow project on some level. It's very... Uh, you know, exclusive in the fact that it has to, had to have so many experts to put her together. But actually, that's not what we're about either. It's about communicating with everyday folk. You know, she has done uh, an artwork for the band in the 1975, very cool and all of that, because we want to reach out to audiences with her artwork um, that are, are... It's important that it's every everybody involved with this. It's not just uh, big decision makers at the top you know, everybody, everybody's lives are affected by machine learning and the future technologies. So it is right that we get as a whole public people engaged in this, but they don't need to have expertise to know how it affects them. And so that all the more reason why we are having this project that is trying to reach out to different types of audiences so that collectively we can make sure those ethical considerations are brought in. So as... Um... Well, as a business person and as a, as a visionary behind the project, you are creating as well a path for uh, Ada as, in one end, an artist. And this is probably the fast growing or the fast rising artist, as you mentioned. And I completely agree with that because it's money at a time. You are in the leading museums of the world. It's being accepted, which is not easy, as you know. Um, how do you see that part of Ada as an individual artist that is as well a robot, which is kind of unique in, in all the areas? Um... So basically, as I go on, it's a, it, it is that she engages audiences and that she's a channel for discussion. Um, she's not conscious. We're, we've got some way to go before we can even contemplate any replication or imitation of that. Um, so, yes, she is a robot we, and she functions like a robot, obviously. But as I say, our focus has always been to title her as an artist. We've been very clear on that. We're not trying. There's lots of things a robot can do. And that's great, but that's not our concerns. The concern and goal, we're very clear thinking about what this project's about. It is about trying to get in an accessible way artwork that will uh, look at the role of, as I say, future technologies. Amazing. So uh, in terms of, uh, you mentioned Damien Arst and a lot of other artists. So they create like a trend of art, an art construction, an art uh, footprint and actually in history that's what most of the big artists do and you study a lot of this as you mentioned in the beginning so Ada is creating all of these amazing pieces uh, whatever aesthetical we might like in one direction but these are already amazing pieces which I know that you have a lot of conscious of someone I've been working with Picasso's and a lot of other art pieces how do you see this work that's been created by let's say the the the, the entity uh, we call Ada how do you see this work and are you looking at this because you have a you mentioned a huge conscious of democratizing the concept of, of robotics and as well humanoids to, to, to people in general. But there's a, a huge creativity sense that you have a sense of artistic approach that is unique because most of the engineering work around robots is mostly just replicating and come up with the best new trench or then militarized things. So it's a very different approach that I think only in history we have people like Leonardo that, that look at this. They were founded by the Medicis that had the money and at the same time were looking at ideas and engineer, but there's very few times. So there's a, a very conscious uh, medicine, a lot of different areas that in your work, um, and I'm, I'm going with a big, big concept, but I'm particularly interested in that. So you see this kind of uh, the work that comes out of Ada um, and as well the influence on the art world and as well the relationship with the art world. Yeah, I'm really excited by that. Um, we've had already lots of press saying, oh no, is she going to take all the artist's jobs? Is this really art in any case? Well, that's kind of the reaction that they did to all the main artists in, exactly. in history. So um, the way that we see the rise of technological art, as we might call it, is uh, how I see the rise of the camera. In the 1850s, when cameras were becoming 
accessible to normal people. People were genuinely worried. They thought the job of the painter was over. And I've actually got some newspaper articles from the 1850s and 60s that say it's, it's, it's going to be this disrupting technology that's going to kill us all and it's all going to be uh, not as good as it was before. Well, actually, we all know that the camera and the photography was just taken into the hearts of the artists and were used in fabulous and exciting ways. I think that this is a different type of art. I think Ada is heading a movement of uh, developing the abilities of artists in lots of, as a tool. And I think AI and machine learning and, in fact, all of the different technologies coming through at the moment will be in enhancing artistic practice. I don't think it's going to take the artist's jobs away. It's going to change them and influence them for sure, just like the camera has. It. The camera has definitely influenced the way that art production is done. And I think machine learning and, and these different technologies coming in are definitely going to be doing that. And I'm really excited by that. But I don't think it's quite the Armageddon. I think there's going to be massive change though. And I think I'm thrilled that some of the big bodies that I see within the art world and the museum side, they're already embracing the fact that the art world is under massive change. To be fair, along with the rest of the world, it's not just art. Art only reflects the world. Art has only ever really reflected what's going on. So the fact that the art is changing, it means then that the reflection, it means that the world is changing. And I do think that we're in a huge pivot point in history, technologically, because of the capability as we go towards the, this controversial word called the singularity, as we get more powerful computers coming in, the world is going to be changing. We are in a, a, a period of flux. And I think this last couple of years with uh, uh, different revolutions coming through and different pan with the pandemic, I think we are well aware that we are going into a different type of world. You know, um, Blade Runner was a fiction now becoming fact. How many times are we going to say that? And in actual fact, we can see um, that Ada and the artwork that she is doing, I'm hoping is heading a whole movement. I think we need more artists in board. We're not worried about the competition. Come on in. Exactly. We, want, we want people to engage because the more artists that engage with future technologies, the more that there is public, more public engagement in this side, the safer the world will be. We don't want just small pockets of people with this powerful technology. We want everybody to take this technology so we have a, a more harmonious, carefully thought through world where people are engaged and understand what they're looking at. You know, um, and that's really, as I say, that's the heart of the project. So if, uh, the, the tsunami of robots that are coming, uh, uh, we can embrace. We don't need to be scared. It is like all these technologies in the history of the world. They come in, they affect society, and we adapt. And that's exactly what I see will come. But we do need to do it in an ethical way because we've also known that people who rush into areas and use it inappropriately could cause great disaster too. So it's just a thoughtful consideration, really. No, it's, and I think that part uh, uh, is, for me, the most important as well because we are working on technology. We just need to be mean, meaningful and, it, and as well create a context for narrative. So my last question is, as a visionary, the creator of uh, Ada, what would be your vision? Because you are doing a revolution uh, and, and as well with one year, because it's a very new project and you achieve a, a fantastic result. You learn a lot because, like you said, you are an independent. You're not Google, Facebook, or all these big corporations, but you achieve something that some of them didn't, let's be honest. But how do you see this vision going forward? And what is kind of, your, from your experience as well, working with multiple universities, with creators, with as well machines, engineering, robotics, what would be like the summary and the, your goal now that you, you have something? Well, I think there is a rise of a different approach to art. I think we are going into a new period of art production. But again, I can't get off the subject. I'm really very clear on the goals and focus. It is about the world becoming a safer environment. And rather than being threatened by these future technologies because of people using them in a very poor way, which the 20th century has got lots of examples of how technology can be done in that way, let's get proper engagement so that we can safely use these in the domino effect, if we go into biotechnology and we're affecting the way that the body is used, please let's have ethical consideration because the domino effect of biotechnology in use and that on the future generations 
can be enormous. If we're going to use transhumanism, where we're using technology to strap onto the humans so that we're able to have much more able bodies, again, let's think about that's effect on the environment. We're a pretty destructive uh, species. We get, you know, um, ourselves into the, we big ourselves up and then we have this disaster. What about the consideration of the animals? What about the consideration of the environment? What about the consideration of our bodies if we go intrusively into the technology of our bodies? This is not good. And so in actual fact, let's think carefully about the world that we live in. Let's have some balance. Let's have some consideration for the animals that, let's face it, make the world the remarkable world we've got. If we think about biotechnology, well, think about is it just disease eradication or are we going to go down a crazy route where we're going to be megalomaniac and try and be superhuman? We've seen history do that before in different ways. Has that been a good result? So I think it's just having some care. I think it's having some consideration and taking our time. We don't need to come up with enormous great big technological changes tomorrow and immediately monetize them because we know that's not going to be a great result. We've got an incredible period of time. Incredible things are coming through. Let's try and think just, oh, let's make money out of it. Let's try and think, actually, what impact is this going to have? We want to have a remarkable world. We've got a remarkable world. We're making a mess of it in so many areas. We're going through an incredible period of history in the use of these rising technologies. Together, let's do something really special. Well, wow, that's wonderful and very inspiring. So just last thing. So what, I know that there's a huge year coming ahead for Ada. Do you want to just highlight some of the things where people can find it? Yeah, it's really exciting. It starts off, as I've already said, with the Design Museum show at the beginning of next year. It's really, really exciting. And there's some incredible artworks on the show and the process where we reveal the process of what we're doing. Um, but we've then got seven further museum shows from Taiwan to uh, um, Abu Dhabi to Istanbul to New York to Silicon Valley. It's a very exciting period of time. Uh, we're going to do, um, Ada's going to be traveling around the world and we've got, we're visiting China and that's going to be a very exciting trip. We're visiting America. Uh, again, an incredibly exciting trip coming through. Um, and um, and then there's lots of other different, we've got an artist residency in St. Thai, it's going to the heart of the modern British art movement, which is really, really exciting. Um, we're going to be doing something, uh, I can't tell you too much because it's confidential, but we'll be doing something with the Olympics, uh, which is next year. We're also doing something with the centenary of Dante in Italy, the 700th anniversary. So, so there's lots of different projects that she's involved with, in fact, 29, so it is quite a few projects. Uh, but it's it's an inspiring year and we're going to be doing it with lots of innovation. We're going to continue the innovating uh, of what she's capable of doing. Um, and again, we're hoping that different audiences will engage on this, consume this and enjoy this, but also think about this. So it's, 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 a, it's an inspiring year ahead. Thank you so much. It's been a, an honor to be here in this wonderful place as well that you choose to be the home of Ada. And uh, well, I congratulate you for all this work and I hope that it will be a huge success as well to inspire, but as well, like you said, create awareness for technology and special robotics. Okay, Thank you so nice much. to meet you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank Bye -bye. you.